All right, so if you click on where it says semester website project, I've worked out um, basically some grading tiers. So I'll go through, I don't mean tiers like crying, right? Like I think I said that. Every time I say that, I just think, oh, you should think of a different word because it just makes it seem like it's gonna be sad to do the project, but um, I'll, uh, I'll get to that in a second. So the main concept for the website is to put all, pretty much everything that you're learning this semester on the website to demonstrate your knowledge on the different time periods in terms of literature and some of the cultural aspects of each time period. The goal is here, I highlighted in yellow, the goal is to be able to say, what does it mean when we say a piece of literature is medieval? Or what does it mean when we say an artwork is um, from the Middle Ages? How do we know when we look at it or when we read it that it has the characteristics of that time period? So the way that we can do that is to um, do some investigation based on the um, history, the customs, attitudes, literature, art of each time period. So as I've said many times already in the two periods that we've looked at already, the literature is, it's my job to give you all the information, you know, discussion, notes, things like that on the literature of the time periods. The time periods are listed here that we're going to go through. Um, it's your job to do extra research to sort of um, add to your understanding of those time periods with the other background information. So that's why I've been giving you time in class to make those notes. I did start to look at your notes um, that you turned in last night. I think I graded five or six of them, and I'll show you where you can find the notes on, um, and the feedback that I'm giving you on those in just a second. So the goal here is to create a website that compiles information to identify key characteristics of each of the literary time periods that are listed there. I thought we just shared it with you. What? Like the notes. Right. No, I just went into your folder because you've already shared it with me. Yeah. No, I, I, I went into your folder. You already shared it with me. I went into your folder. I looked at your notes. Well, I mean, I, like I said, I haven't done it for everybody because it was just, you know, like seven hours ago. <laughs> uh, I went into the folders, and I'm going to finish them, the rest of them during the period today while you're working, um, and I added a document to your folder, what I did was. So I just added a document after I looked at it, so there's some people who have some source issues, there's some people who did a great job. I just made a little note, and then that's where I'll give you your feedback in that document. Every time I'm grading your progress, I'll put the date and your grade and my comments in that document that you can access. I was going to show that to you later, but I can see you're worried about it, so that's how that, that's how that worked. I looked at what you had. I sort of just, you know, like peeped into your notebook is what I did. It's like the modern version of turning your notebook to me so I can see what you're doing. All right, so um, the due date officially is May 13th, 2019, which sounds like a long way away, and it is in some ways, but also, you know how it is at the end of the year. That's the kind of thing that sneaks up on you, but... We're going to be working on it pretty heavily as we go through each of the periods. I'm going to give you time to work on them. So if you're keeping up with those aspects, then I don't think that you'll have a hard time getting the whole website ready for that due date. The final um, website grade will be used as your semester exam score. So you will not have to have an official test over all of the material that we study. Your website will stand as the evidence of your learning throughout the semester of the material that we I put that officially on there so that you can know 100% that's the way it's going to work. Um, grades on the progress of the website will be taken throughout the semester. So this first grade that, I, that I'm taking is just on your notes because we have, haven't really started the website yet. But later on as we go through the semester, I envision that we'll have a few quizzes and things like that over the readings, but um, the majority of your other grades will come from being at a certain point and having completed a certain amount of tasks and amount of pages on your website at a certain date. So I didn't want to put those out yet on the, you know, make a list of those dates, but I will give you a week or two in advance and I'll say, okay, by this date, you need to have these three pages completed. So obviously a month from now, your classical section on your website and your Anglo-Saxon section on your website should be pretty much complete because we're going to be moving on to the Middle Ages and the Renaissance. So as we go through, I'm going to expect that you're accumulating uh, pages in your website. And today I'm going to show you how you're going to share that in the same folder so that I can check your website. It's not going to go online until you're ready, but I can check your progress um, just the same way that I can look at a document. 
So if you look at the big chart here, I sat down and I thought about, okay, well, if this is going to count for the semester exam and all of our work for the semester, then it, to get an A on it takes, is going to take some effort, right? We don't just give A's in advanced literature courses for no reason. So I started with a description of what an A will look like. And the reason I'm giving this to you now is because maybe you decide for yourself the A is pretty labor intensive and it's got, it's extra. Like hashtag extra. B is, I think, the grade that a lot of people will go for. Um, it doesn't mean you're going to get a B, but I'm telling you right now all the qualities of what it's going to take to make an A, what it's going to take to make a B, what it's going to take to make a C. I don't think anybody's going for a D or an F on this project. I don't think anybody wants to um, get a low grade on their semester exam. But maybe, I don't know, I, don't, I want you to go for what grade you think is best for you. And if you want to go for the A, it's there. You know, I'm here to help you do that. Um, I also realize that realistically, not everybody's in a position where they can go for the A. They've got um, obligations, other advanced classes, and so on. So you might end up, good morning, you might end up, grab a Chromebook on your way in there. You might end up going for the A and ending up with the B if it gets too labor intensive for you. Or you might end up going for the B and you know making sure that you have all those qualities and you're pretty sure that your semester exam is going to be a B. You're going to come out with an 80 to an 89. So I'm just telling you up front, these are the qualities of the end product of the websites for each grade. So the main difference, let's just talk about A's and B's um, first and then I'll talk about you know the C's and lower. So the main difference is that the A websites are going to be teaching websites. Websites that are so complete that uh, college students could learn from them. So the difference there between the A and the B is that a B is just going to demonstrate. And you'll see that there's a difference between the A and B, especially in the fact that the A website will have assessments. There will be quizzes, things that the students can do to make sure they understand the knowledge that's on that page. So. That's the main difference between the A and the B. Your audience is also different. The next um, row says that your audience for the A is college students online. And for the B, it's me and your class. Right? So there's a little difference there because with, if it's just the instructor and your class, I think that's normal for projects. You're going to present it or, you know, like the class is going to see it. Um, but A is sort of like a broader audience. Any college student in the world and look at the work that you've done and learn from it for their own literature class. And that's like a big responsibility. So I feel like that's the quality that we're looking for in an A. So an A should be, an A website should be ready to be used to teach a class. A professor could assign it to students. There aren't gonna be errors or grammatical problems or links that don't work or anything like that. It's gonna be something that a professor could say, I want you to look at this website it's professionally done and this is your homework. And then do the quiz that's on that page. The B is um, publishable on the web, something that could be a good resource, maybe people will quote it, um, or kids who are studying might look at it to get an idea of something, right? And it's verifiable. Accuracy, of course, the A has to be completely accurate. Um, no errors in any way. When I was looking at the notes, the ones that I looked at so far, there were errors in note taking, but I'm not, I'm, it's not the final version. So I kind of looked past that thinking when you were typing in when you were watching the film or when I was going over something, just make sure that when you move that stuff in whatever way you do to the website that you make your corrections, right? So as we're getting closer to the end of the semester, you're gonna need to proofread. You're gonna need to have um, me check it for you or have somebody else, another set of eyes on it so that you can make sure that it's valid because even the B, needs to be um, only negligible minor problems with facts, examples, or grammar, or formatting, or any of that stuff. The A's will be basically perfect and combed over. Continuing down with the A's and B's onto the next page, thoroughness. So the um, most thorough A will be a website that explains all the key characteristics. The characteristics are listed here at the top on the first page for you on the left literature, development of the English language, art, history, customs, attitudes. Those are the characteristics. 
because we're going to apply all of these to each one of the time periods. So obviously the website has to deal with all of those things for each of those periods. <clears throat> for each time period, there should be a description, factual information, examples, and multimedia support. So and that means images, maybe you're going to embed a video, and I can show you how to do that on the website. Um, diagrams, things like that to make sure that whoever's learning from that website um, can understand it thoroughly. Uh, the B explains all key characteristics of all assigned time periods, but you can see that there is less of an expectation in terms of the content on the website. Where the A needed to have multimedia support, the B can have images and key links. Like go and visit this website and take a look at it you know, connecting them up to other information. The A is going to be more all-inclusive on that page, if that makes sense. Um, the next thing is documentation. This course from STC, they want us to use MLA, so you have to make sure that you cite everything in MLA format. You might decide to cite um, at the <coughs> bottom of the page, unless you like with a footer at the bottom and give your sources for each page that you're making in your website. Um, I think that would probably be most effective because if somebody lands on your web page and the sources aren't there, they might not know to look to another page to find your sources, you know what I mean? So we'll talk about that as it develops, but you do need to make sure that you're citing your sources and that the source material is valid. Um, there were a few issues with that here and there, and as I notice them, I'm going to bring them to your attention. The difference between the A and the B is in terms of documentation is that um, this one has to um, easy access to gain source material, and um, this one, the difference is, uh, where did I put it? Effectively and properly cite in MLA so that, um, yeah, you don't need to necessarily have links here. You can just list it like a works cited at the bottom of the page. But this one, you should, as much as possible, link to the source so somebody could jump to that if they wanted to read the original place where you got that information. So it's always just a little bit more that's expected in the A, obviously. Um, learning tools. So if your website is designed to teach people, then you need to include tools to make sure that they can check that they're learning. So that would include things like quizzes, writing topics, handouts, flashcards. You have to make them. You're not linking to somebody else's flashcards. You're not um, linking to somebody else's handout or quiz that you found online. You're creating those things. So you can embed documents and that sort of thing. If you need help, I'll, I'll be here to help you with that. In order to help students and instructors evaluate their progress. In this case, you need at least seven of them across the whole website. One for each of the time periods. The B has basically the same thing, original quizzes, other assessment tools, and so on, but the, the minimum is at least three. So you're just going to choose three of the time periods and make an assessment for each one of those. It could just be, here's an essay topic that you would write about if you understood these, this concept. Um, the C backs off from that even more, but I'll talk about the C's in a minute. So I'm thinking most people are going to go for A's or B's. Organization, um, most of you will probably decide to organize your website with different web pages within the site. And it needs to be easy to navigate. People need to be able to find what they're looking for. The links need to be active. Have you ever been to a website where you click on something and it goes, you know, 404, file not found. And you're like, oh, that looked like a really good source. I really wanted to use that, but it's a broken link. So all the links need to be active and um, go to the correct information. Um, it needs to be easy for an instructor to look at it and assign it to students. The B is a little bit different. The links need to be active. The website needs to be um, organized so that there's separate pages, but there's not this element because this isn't a teaching website and this one is. So this is more of an instructor focus. All right. The last one, the last quality, is aesthetics. Websites need to be attractive. They need to be um, efficient. So if it's sort of all over the place, then that's not helpful for people to learn. So the backgrounds and images and way that you set up your website needs to be effective. Um, it should be easy to find embedded media. 
and other elements that you're putting in there for students to experience. The design choices that you make to set up your website should enhance the ability of students to learn from that website and color schemes and that sort of thing should be um, help with organization. So if you wanted to have a different color scheme for each time period, that way it's easy for people to see. You know, like how on the web log, I'll put due dates in red bold so that you can see those quickly. That's an organizational strategy to help you identify when there's something coming up that needs to be done and is due. So it, you need to make, you know, be conscious of the fact that if somebody's coming to this website and learning about this for the first time, the way that you set it up visually needs to help them. Uh, the B is similar. Uh, what's missing is the embedded aspect of any media that you embed. And um, I didn't put this part about viewing experiences enhanced by the student's design choices. So A is like you know the big heavy hitter, and then B is like the easier to do version of that. Does that make sense? Are there any questions about the A's and B's before I talk about the C's and D's and E's? For me, in my mind, when I was creating this chart so that you'd have an idea of my expectations, I was thinking that maybe some people might go for the C, but I thought most people would probably go for the B or the A. Um, so the C might be something that if you get jammed up, it's the end of the semester, you didn't really keep up with your things, that you might end up with a C. So a C is different because the um, goal is just to report. You're just giving information that you learned over the semester like a report that you might do in a paper or um, you know, a poster or a PowerPoint or something like that. The audience is just me because I'm grading it. Um, it's acceptable to prove some knowledge of the course material, but you might not put it on the web for people to learn from it. There might be some errors. I'm not saying you should go for that. Maybe some people who go for a B might end up with a C because they have errors or they don't... Um, look at the little details and the design aspect is lacking and that sort of thing. Um, the C has um, all the characteristics. I'm on the second page now with, um, let's see. I think this is thoroughness, yeah. So the C has all key characteristics of assigned time periods um, and you don't even have to have links with the C, it's just images, examples, factual information. So basically every time it's going down in the grade, I'm taking something off as a requirement in that category. Ds and Fs in my mind are unsuccessful projects. I don't think anybody wants a D or an F on their semester exam. So I'm thinking this is what's gonna happen by default if people don't keep up with their work or they don't end up being able to turn in a quality product. So I don't really feel like I need to talk about that because these are failure pay, failure assignments. Um, this is what's going to happen grade-wise if I can't give it these grades over here. C's also, if we look at documentation, are effectively and properly cited. It still needs to be an MLA uh, if for a C. Because to pass this class, you need to use a no show that you can use MLA. Um, you will include some kind of quizzes or assessment tools, but they don't notice that they don't need to be original for a C. So remember when I said if people are learning from your website, you have to create quizzes. It can be a, a Kahoot. It can be a paper with quiz questions. It can be, you know, there could be a lot of different ways that you could create an assessment. The C does not need to be original. So what that means is that you can go on to Quizlet, find some questions that deal with that topic, that somebody else did and link it to your web page. So for the C, you don't have to make the stuff. But for the B and the A, you do need to do that. Um, they don't need to be created by the web designer. It says right there. You're the web designer, the students, right? Um, it needs to be organized in some ways. Uh, notice that maybe there's some broken links or something like that on the C. Uh, so somebody could be going for a B but end up in C by accident by not checking and being thorough with their work. Then the last one is the aesthetics. So in the aesthetics for the C, there's an effort to set it up attractively. Uh, I could tell that you tried to put a picture as a background. Uh, maybe you changed the color scheme so that it matched, right? Like it's not highly efficient in terms of its visual appeal, but there was an attempt to, like you just didn't leave it as the default website Thing for five months, you know. Um, 
So the C is an attempt to do that, and then the failure is no effort at all um, to even customize the website in any way. Did I explain that well enough for you? Do you kind of get a vision of you know the decisions that you have to make over the next few months? I know that it seems overwhelming because I'm listing them all at once, but just keep in mind that we, we have a process that we're going through through the semester. And I do plan to give you class time to work on it, so as we go through each time period, you should have some time, you know, like, like we have already, where, okay, here's some notes on the literature of this time period, now I want to give you a class period where you can do some research on the customs and the art and that sort of thing. So also, this is there for you to refer to. It's, it's there online, so you can um, keep going back to it. You can make a copy of it and put it in your project folder if you want. If you go back to the weblog, that's pretty much the end of that document. If you go back to the weblog, you'll see that today we're going to work on the site, the making our website. So are there any questions on the chart at all before I move on to that? No? There might be questions as we go along. You know, things will pop up. There's some things you're not going to do right now. Like, I don't think you're going to make a quiz right now today. So <laughs> as things come up, I'll give maybe t mini tutorials in class. Like, how do you make a quiz? What are the things that teachers think about when they're making a quiz? Um, you know, that kind of thing. I'll give you some little mini things as we go along to help you with your project. Okay, so the last thing I want to point out to you is that I put some links to some videos. I'm going to help you today get started with your Google site. But um, I think we already started one, right? Like, don't we all have like one that we just opened and named yeah. or something? So today you can maybe play around with the website because that's the vessel, right, where all your information is going to go. So we have to make sure that that's sturdy so that when we start putting information, there's a place for it to land. So that's why I want that to be established. And then as we go through the time period, you can add a new page, start putting that information on to your sources and, and, and add to it. But if we don't already have the website, then there's no place for your notes to go. They're just hanging out in that folder. So um, I did put some tutorials there that are pretty good. Um, how to create a website. So if you need to start from scratch, there's a video to help you with that. Google Sites for Beginners using advanced features. Um, how to embed videos. Do you know what I mean by embedding videos? Like you could link to it. Um, well, you probably have done it, right? You can link, like a lot of times on the web blog, there'll be a link, and if you click on it, it takes you to the video. There's also embedding, where because of um, HTML coding, you can just make the video player right there on your website. All I have to do is press play. Like you've probably been to websites where it's already the video's there, and you don't have to go to YouTube. Oh, yeah. It's just visually right there, and they just press play, and it plays right on the website. That's, that's the difference between an A and a B. So there's some um, advanced things that you can learn. I wouldn't go to the advanced ones until you got a good handle on how to make a page, right? how to customize it, and that kind of thing. Um, and then there's like the help page from Google itself. I'll be here to help you, but maybe you're at home working on it, or maybe there's a day when there's a sub or something like that. I'm playing around with the idea of taking a week to go and visit my niece and nephew when they're off for winter break, which doesn't coincide with our spring break. I don't know if that's going to happen, uh, but I, since I didn't go for Christmas, I'm kind of feeling like I might take five days to do so then maybe a lot of the time would be you working on updating your website. And so you know, if I'm here, I'm glad to help you. If not, I'm giving you some resources there. Um, so, and I also put a reminder here about how next Thursday is the next section of Beowulf, which is that big section. So we have until next Thursday to get that done as a reminder. So should we go, and why don't you go to your Google Drive and go to where you have your, if you were with us on that day, then you can um, just access the website that you already created. Remember where I put my example one. If you didn't make one on that day, or maybe whatever you did, you don't really want to use it, then you can just go to new. It's just like opening a document or a slideshow or you know, like whatever you might have. Sheets, you just go to more and then you choose choose Google Sites and then you can name it this will be my example one that I'll mess around with during the semester now it's not online until you 
specifically publish it. So you're working on it in your, just as a document, really. And then later, you can publish it. So I don't want you to think that it's live on the web until you do something specific to make it live on the web. So you should have already made a title, but if you didn't, you can do that. Like, see this publish button right there? That's when it goes live on the web and any, anybody in the world can see it. 